Today we'll be talking about the mathematical modeling of DC motors. As a control engineer, you might be asked to use various types of motors in different applications. Let's start by looking at the different motors that would be available to you. Here is a stepper motor that is used pretty commonly. These usually have multiple cables coming out of them, uh, usually around four or five plus. Uh, these are used for laser cutters, 3D printers, uh, and various other devices such as those. They can also, uh, these are used in applications where we need a precise step motion uh, of the motor. You might also be familiar with this type of motors, which are, which we call server motors. These have three cables coming out of them. These are used for uh, small robotics applications and many other small systems where you don't need too much torque, but you need a precise angle uh, angle positioning for the, your device. This is a uh, DC motor. This is a typical workhorse DC motor where you want either high torque or high speed application depending on how you use it. A DC motor will have two wires coming out of this. Uh, this particular DC motor has a gearbox already attached to it and has attached to a shaft. We'll be looking at how to model motors such as these. A typical DC motor would consist of the following simple com components, an inductor L and a resistance R that represent the inductance and the resistance of the coil in that motor. We would apply an input voltage V in to this motor and the motor would generate some kind of a back EMF epsilon. The motors also would have a shaft, which would have a moment of inertia J, and it would rotate at a speed omega and would produce a torque tau. How would we write down the equations of the electrical part? We would apply Kirchhoff's voltage law along this loop. And the voltage law would just say that Vn minus Vl minus Vr minus epsilon equals zero. Let us assume there is a current that I that flows through this. So Vn minus L, Vl is L di dt minus Vr is by Ohm's law given by IR minus epsilon equals zero. This is the first equation that we will use to generate our system of equations. Another thing to know about, note about a DC motor is that the torque is going to be proportional to the current. Now the torque will equals K times the current, where K is something that we call the motor constant. If power is uh, conserved across this motor, then the torque multiplied by the angular velocity would equal the, vo the voltage epsilon multiplied by the current I. Again, torque is given by Ki, then Ki times omega equals epsilon i. So epsilon would equal K omega. These two equations give us a way that we can go between the electrical domain and the mechanical domain. And it will help us generate our, our system of equations. Another piece would be to look at the rotation of that shaft. And if we apply conservation of angular momentum to that shaft, the sum of all the torques acting on that shaft would be equal J times omega dot, where omega is the angular velocity. In this case, we'll assume that there are no frictional torques or any other torques acting on this. So just the torque from the motor would equal J times omega dot. Combining this and the expression for the torque, 
we get k i equals j omega dot. So, i would equal j over k omega dot. We can then substitute this expression into our equation up here. And what we end up getting is this. Lj over k omega double dot plus jr over k omega dot plus k omega equals vn. Here we see another simple second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients very similar to the ones we've already seen before. And again, we will be able to solve this in the same ways and using the same techniques we will learn in this class. Another thing that we should think about is that in most cases, the inductor uh, has a very low impedance as compared to the resistance of the coil. So we, we could probably assume that the inductance uh, is negligible. And if we do that, we end up, we can write the following expression. And then substituting for the current and the uh, uh, back EMF, we get And then solving for the torque, we end up getting this. This is the expression that we can use to generate something called a torque speed curve. And a torque speed curve is something that we can use to characterize motor performance. So let's look at, take a look at that. So the torque speed curve is given by this expression, k over r v in minus k omega. And omega is the speed of the motor. If we graph this, at a constant input voltage V in, let's call that V1, we will get a straight line with a descending slope. The uh, x-axis would be the speed and the y-axis would be the torque. When the speed is zero, what we call this the stall torque. And when, when we have no load or no torque acting on his motor, we have the uh, no load speed, which we call omega and L. Of course, at a different voltage, this graph would look a little bit different. It would still have the same slope, but it would have a different stall torque and a different no load voltage. Another thing that a torque speed curve can help us with is the uh, like trying to understand the power consumed by a motor. If we are operating at a high torque but a low speed, the power would be given by the area under this curve. Right? Or conversely, if we are operating at a low torque but high speed, the power would be given by the area under this curve. The areas are low compared uh, to the total power that we can get. However, the optimal power would be somewhere in between. Somewhere in between where we have an optimal torque and an optimal speed that this motor could operate at. The torque speed curve gives us an idea of how 
uh, how motor characteristics that could be important when we're designing or trying to decide what type of motor goes into our system. And it's important to look at from a manufacturer before even purchasing motors. In the next video, we'll look at a rack and pinion mechanism, which works in a similar way uh, to these motors. Thank you.